we were, we were doing a thing with, uh, I'd heard that you were, you were going to do a version of Welcome to the Jungle with Ice-T. And it was funny because we, we were talking to uh, Chuck D in Public Enemy recently, and he's, he's really into like slamming music. And he said, uh, so what, what do you listen to? What do you like? And he said, you know, Guns N' Roses. They, did, they do slamming music, which is odd. You wouldn't expect to hear this in rap circles. I circles, listen to but... Public Enemy now all the time. That's, <laughs> really? Yeah. I listen to Public Enemy, Ice-T, um, N.W.A., and Ghetto Boys. <laughs> Are you, do you think that you're, there's a future for you in rap? I mean, are you, are you good at this? I'm not that good at rap. And, you know, um, I listen to it a lot. It's like, I like it because it keeps me awake and aware of what's going on. Yeah. You know, it's like I watch you on TV raps more than I watch Headbangers Ball. Yeah. Headbangers Ball has a lot. Some, stuff, some stuff's good. Some things are like, I don't know. It's, it, I look at it like, yeah, I was there five years ago yeah. or six years ago. I want to move on. I listen to Public Enemy a bit more because they because of all the social issues they bring up yeah. in, in their things and in, in their songs and stuff. So that's like, I don't know what I agree with and what I disagree with at this point. I'm just listening to it and yeah. enjoying it and enjoying that someone's taking that strong of a stand on what they believe. All right, what, what do you do? Well, let's, let's take two live crew as an example. I and mean, this has been a, a good and a bad year for them. What do, you, what do you make of the fact that someone in the United States for the first time, a record can be declared illegal, essentially? I, mean, this is... I think it's crazy. I mean, I think it's like, you know, saying the diary of Anne Frank, you know, causes, influences people in a bad way or something, or the dictionary that has, if it has a definition for a four-letter word, yeah. is in a bad way. I mean, there was an article in Penthouse Magazine saying that if you want to, like, point fingers and say what influences people in a bad way and most powerful influence and, like, what damage has been done, it's like the Bible has caused more wars and death than anything by people True. reacting to it however they feel they should react to this yeah. more than any other book, you know? So unless you're going to get rid of Shakespeare, unless you're going to get rid of the Bible and things like that, back off and, you know, I'm sorry if it makes your job of raising your kids a little bit harder, maybe, you know, you should have thought about that beforehand before yeah, you had your really. kids, so. I mean, do you think you'd feel different about this after you had a kid? No. No, not even, even if something, even if my... Even if I had a kid and he did something because he thought, because the record said do it, yeah. you know, I, no, I don't think I would feel different at all, because yeah. I think about that a lot. Was, it, was your experience with religion as a kid essentially positive? I mean, you had the musical aspect of it, that was good? Or it, was, it, was essentially, it was essentially positive <laughs> about teaching you the King James Bible, yeah. what, is, what the Bible says, but I just watched my church, or watched everybody become very hypocritical and self-righteous to the point that they started, like, destroying the unity they had that built the church. Yeah. You know, because I was there from the beginning to when it became a big church. Is it a Baptist church? Or? No, it was Pentecostal. Yeah. And it was like about eight miles out in the country. And then it just got very hypocritical and self-righteous, you know, like, you know, you could, you could sit there as a kid and watch people on this side of the church were saying something bad about the people over here, you know, and it's yeah. like, it just got like, who was more religious, you know, within yeah. the church? Who was purer? who was going to heaven and who wasn't in the congregation. And it was like, it was just very, very negative yeah. well, at that it, point. Does, it, does this upset you at all seeing, because these seem to be the people, the fundamentalist people, <clears throat> seem to be, to be the, the people that are attacking popular music, especially rock and rap now. I mean, people like, we just covered a, a record burning, believe it or not, again. These guys, the Peters Brothers, and they're throwing in old, the old Ozzy records and all this stuff. I and mean, it's, it's incredible that this is coming back again here. Yeah, it's 1990. It's like know? Dave Mustaine says, though, you know, to burn them, you had to go buy them. Yeah. <laughs> Good thought, I suppose. <laughs> you know, it's like go ahead, burn the record. You know, make make some news, <laughs> make some news for me. Um, I think people are just scared of art. You know, which art's very powerful, and it's hard to say which art. You know should be in the hands of babes, you know, that they don't understand yeah. what they've got in their hands. I mean, the wall is a very powerful yeah. piece of work that, like, I know people that, like, got into the wall and didn't come out of it for yeah. five years, you know? They just locked themselves into this frame of mind of whatever they were getting out of that album, yeah. you know? And I don't, I, most of it seemed to be positive, but during the five years, they became very distant from everybody and very yeah. alienated. Um, but Roger Waters was giving everything he had, describing where he had been in his mind yeah. you know, and what life did to him. So I, I don't know, it's, it, art, 
art's a very powerful thing, and I just don't think they know what to do with it. And I don't think they can stop it, but you have to go out and fight. You've always had to do it. And just because we're in the 90s and it seems like it's easier, you know, it's really no different than, like, you know, back in the 17th century, you know, when you yeah. had to fight for a book to be printed or something. Yeah. Do, you still, do you still paint or anything yourself? And I'm just starting to draw and paint. Um, a few years ago, it was like, okay, you can go take photos or you could build a sculpture. Um, you could probably just throw yourself into the band. It was like all or nothing for Guns yeah. N' Roses to get to make this happen, to give me the chance to do whatever I wanted. Yeah. You know, it's like there was other reasons for, you know, Guns N' Roses fighting to get this successful was so that we could do what we wanted and yeah. get a, and get away with it and be able to live comfortably doing it, you know, and have some security. What did you when you finally got you finally got on the stage with the Stones last fall? Were, were they what you expected them to be, you know, 27 years on in their career? Did they still have something going for them, did you think? It was, it was great playing with them. It was, it was a, a definite dream. I mean, it was yeah. something that we told people we were going to do, and people were going, no, they're broke up. I don't care. We're <laughs> going to open for the Stones. You wait. <laughs> we're going to do this. I don't know how, but we're going to do this. So, and then, you know, I told Keith Richards that, and he's like, well, you made it, mate. Let me have a cigarette. <laughs> you know what? 